So what is D-Type? D-Type is a decentralized type system for a global OS, for Ethereum. A global type system enables independently built system parts to interoperate. Developers should agree on standardizing common types and a type registry, continuously working on improving them to become part of the global OS. Ethereum could become the origin for defining types for other programming languages. Now why is D-Type so important? D-Type assigns a global, unique identifier for each type and stores data needed to recompose the type's ABI. Various storage mechanisms can be optionally integrated with D-Type, enabling efficient blockchain data analysis, especially by blockchain explorers without relying on off-chain centralized services to provide ABI data. D-Type is built on top of a consensus engine, therefore the community has means of reaching consensus on the creation and modification of a D-Type. Projects can keep data in a common container and functional programming is encouraged. Moreover, D-Type can be used for data balancing shards or execution environments for future iterations of Ethereum. On top of D-Type, we have built Alias. So what is Alias and why is it important? Alias is a semantic standard for identifying resources by human-readable qualifiers supporting any type of data. Alias is a DNS-like indirection for D-Type. A resource identifier is based on the D-Type name provided by D-Type and the data content referenced through a human-readable qualifier. I will now show you how with D-Type and Alias anyone can contribute to build the new web. The roots of the new web are grounded on-chain and users and developers add types that compose their applications such as Markdown, Geopoint, Account, Person, and by registering them with D-Type, we recompose their ABI and access the type data programmatically. Any user can make UI templates for viewing and editing type data, and these templates will be loaded and used by anyone who wants to create applications. Development can become a matter of drag and drop, doable by anyone. This demo shows how browsing and editing the web can look like. We can browse and search through all the existing aliases, something that the current web doesn't have. And when we view an alias, the app checks whether the D-type name has a UI package attached to it or not. In this case, the markdown type has one. And if we go to another type like physical address, we see that there is no custom UI package for it, so the default UI package is used. Right now, the default package view template just displays the object, but it also provides an edit template with a general form constructed from the type's ABI. If we go to the GeoPoint type, we see that it has its own UI package with view and edit templates. The templates know how to process the GeoPoint, and if it has a GeoNames ID, we are presented with a GeoNames map, and we will not be able to edit it. Let's go to New York. But we also have GeoPoints without a GeoName ID that can be used to mark locations. For example, Alice's location is here. and she can edit her location if she wants to. Just by dragging the marker. And then saving it. And now if we go to the view template again, we see that the new location has been updated. Let's see Bob's location. Now these UI templates can be reused in any other D type that needs them. So let's go again to the markdown type, to article two.
We've previously shown you how you can include and reference any dtype instance with an alias inside the markdown content. You simply add it like this. The Markdown Preview can dynamically load UI templates for each type in order to show the alias in the intended way. If no UI template is found, then the default template is used again. And we can apply actions to each D-type directly. So for example, if we want to edit a person's name, the default edit template appears. If we want to edit a geo point, then the geo point edit template appears. We can also see the geo points that have a geo name ID, but we cannot edit these. So let's go to the view template to see how our data has changed. So we have our new name for Bob, and we'll go to geo point Bob to see if the location has changed. And it has from Dresden to Leipzig. So what did we just see? We saw how we can build a decentralized web with on-chain data types and data stored either on-chain or in another decentralized storage system, combined with UI templates for each type that can be stored in a decentralized way while still being accessible in a programmatic way. Anyone can use these tools to build user-targeted UI clients such as sites, applications, rich data block explorers. And on top of this, the content will be machine readable and accessible, enabling the creation of smart, customizable agents. I will now show you the building blocks of this system, and I will take the GeoPoint D-type as an example. So let's say you want to build a D-type that references a physical location. You start by creating your D-type definition. This is contained in a Solidity library in a struct. The name of that struct corresponds to the name of our D-type, and we need latitude and longitude as parameters. We chose to represent them as an integer because both latitude and longitude can have a positive or a negative sign. Because we cannot really use fixed or floating points in Solidity, we need a big enough number that would accommodate decimals. And we saw that current map applications such as Google Maps show coordinates with an accuracy of 7 decimals. The range for latitude is from minus 90 to plus 90 degrees and for longitude from minus 180 to plus 180 degrees. We therefore need a range of 2 times 90 times 10 at the power of 7, respectively 2 times 180 times 10 at the power of 7. The size of the maximum range needed is 3 billion 600 million and we therefore end up with int32 because it has a maximum range size of 4,294,967,295. And the range is this one. So we will know that the latitude and longitude values need to be divided by 10 at the power of 7 when used off-chain. Besides these coordinates, you may also want to use one of the already existing standards to mark that location we use the GeoNames ID. There are currently around less than 13 million GeoName IDs represented through positive numbers. We will therefore use uint32. The next smaller size is uint32. 
16, which can only hold values up to 65,535, being too small for our use case. Now, depending on what we build, we can add more properties and then we can customize the identifier for each data record. Here we use the GeoNames ID hash as an identifier for geo points that contain one, and otherwise we hash the actual coordinates. The rest of the library code is standard and can easily be created automatically through a Solidity templating system. Next, we go to the GeoPoint storage contract. And aside from changing the name of the contract, the libraries and the data structure used, there are usually no other changes needed. The creation of this contract can also be automated based on the type definition. The next step will be deploying the GeoPoint library and storage contract and registering them with dtype on chain. This is how the dtype registration data looks like. So each subtype has a name, label, relation and dimensions. Through dimensions it can support any solidity type, even static and dynamic arrays. The type choice property tells us what kind of type is. And we can also have optional properties that are stored in mappings and we can define outputs in the same way as we have defined the types if the dtype is a function. Note that any subtypes used in the GeoPoint dtype definition needs to have been previously registered with dtype. This enables us to create testing frameworks for on-chain and off-chain protocols to make sure that a new type is safe to use. The contract address will reference the type storage contract and the source will reference related source code that has been stored in an off-chain file system. After deploying and registering, we have populated the GeoPoint dtype with some test data and also attached an alias to each data instance. You saw this data in our demo. But we have another application used to browse, add, update, and remove dtypes and data instances. These are already registered dtypes. And we can add new ones. or edit existing ones. Let's look for our GeoPoint type and go to its page. Now we can see the properties here and the stored data instances. And we can add a new data record or update an existing one. The UI components were created programmatically based on the dtype definitions, but as I showed you earlier, we can develop customized packages for each dtype that can be loaded on demand in the interface. So now let me show you the GeoPoint UI package. It currently exports two types of templates, a view and an edit one. Our demo is currently built on Vue.js, so the templates are view templates but they can be simple HTML and JavaScript snippets instead. All the package has to do is expose a get component function, which needs the component type, view or edit, and returns the corresponding component. Each template can receive the data object that needs to be displayed along with the dtype definition. And if a package for that dtype is not found, then we revert to the default view template and default edit template. The dtype package system is currently in development. You will soon be able to create your own dtype contracts and packages easily from a user-friendly interface. Until then, if you want to already start building, you can contact us for support. Thank you for watching and join us in building the new machine and human readable web on Ethereum.